Hello Gecko fans, this is Wally with Supreme Gecko. If you want to see a really cute gecko, take a look at this. This is the Viper Gecko and I'm going to show you today how to keep them, how to care for them, how to breed them, and how to take care of their babies. Stay tuned. It's really bizarre, but I've received probably six or seven requests to do a video on Viper geckos recently in probably the last month and a half. Now I started putting together notes and taking pictures, gathering all the old pictures that I had and just getting my thoughts together for a video. I started putting the script together and I thought to myself, I think I've done this before. So I went out to my channel, my content, looked for videos and sure enough, I have a Viper gecko care video already out there. I'm gonna put the link right here, you can check it out. Hey, let me know in the comments down below. Do you know what a viper gecko, a caratail gecko is? Have you ever had them? Have you ever bred them? Comment down below. So why in the world are we doing another video on viper geckos? Well, that's because I care for them a little bit differently now, a different enclosure. I'm going to show you that in just a second. And I have a couple of tips for you on caring for the babies at the end of this video that you won't want to miss. I know you love when I get out of the office and get down in the facility. Well, I tell you what, folks, this is the hardest area right here to film in. I have literally this much space. That's about two feet to film in. If this looks a little weird, it's because I'm sitting on a little red cart that I use to get to the bottom tanks in our facility. This is so difficult to film in this position. It's so uncomfortable, but I do it for you. Seriously though, it took me about a half hour to get everything set up. The lighting, the camera, the mic, everything situated in this very small contained area. I think I need to hire a producer or somebody to help me. So let me know if you have time to come to my house for these videos and help me set up. So what do you say? Let's talk viper geckos. Viper geckos are better known as caratails, but their scientific name is Hemidactylus imbricatus. But it wasn't until a few years ago that they were known as that. Before that, they were called Teratolopus fasciatus. I know, I know all the scientific names kind of putting you to sleep, isn't it? It does me too. Viper geckos, let's call them viper geckos from now on. But before I get into the really fun stuff about talking about these viper geckos, I do want to mention that they do come from the Pakistani area where they thrive on loose, dry soil. That's really, really super important for our care needs because that's how we should set them up as well. One of the coolest things about these geckos is that they're small. They only get to be about four inches, which allows us to keep them in smaller enclosures. A 10 gallon is absolutely perfect. Again, in the video that I did before, I kept them in 15 quart plastic enclosures. And that's fine, but right now I keep them in five gallons, but I do keep them separate. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. In their enclosures, I keep them over about a half of an inch to an inch of sand. If you have concerns about keeping your animals over sand, certainly keep them on some other kind of a substrate. Keeping viper geckos for over 10 years, I have never had a problem keeping them over sand. Viper geckos are terrestrial, but they do like to climb. They can't climb glass, so you're safe without having a top, although you probably should put a top just to be safe. As you can see, I like to give them a lot of hiding places. One of my favorite hiding places is a flower saucer with a little notch cut in it. It keeps it down close to the substrate. They like that confinement. They like to feel very protected. We also put fake plants in their enclosure, cork bark, and branches. Decorate their enclosure however you wish, to provide them with more enrichment. We give them a food dish and we give them a water dish. Our favorite food dish is the mealworm cup and our favorite water dish is, are these small black dishes. I'll put links down below in the description for both of these. In the mealworm cup, make sure that you have supplements, calcium and vitamins and minerals. The reason I love these black water dishes are because they're squat, they can't be tipped over and the vipers can get right in there and drink. Always change out your water weekly or if it gets dirty. Let's talk about food for these viper geckos. They love, love micro mealworms. We'll throw in just enough for them to eat in about two or three days. For adult vipers, we'll throw in baby, newborn dubias as well. They love small dubias. We'll also very occasionally feed them silkworms, 
waxworms, and also small crickets. Everything that we feed goes right into the mealworm cups. If we're feeding crickets, we'll dust them with a supplement first. Let's talk about lighting and heat for these viper geckos. For lighting, we keep lighting on for about 10 to 12 hours a day. In the winter, we turn it back down to about eight hours. For heat, make sure that you provide about 20 to 25% of their enclosure at about 92 to 94 degrees. You can do that with a heat mat or you can do it with an overhead bulb. In the winter as well, we'll turn that heat down about five to 10 degrees. What are some of the issues with viper geckos? Well, a few years ago, about 10 years ago, we had an issue in the hobby with them being interbred too much. This caused eggs not to hatch out, and when they did hatch out, the babies weren't strong. Over the last few years, we've had an influx of new bloods from Europe, and that's really strengthened the viper geckos. The other issue you may encounter is if you keep too many babies in the same enclosure, and as they grow and mature and become males, you could have some tail nipping. You might be losing some tails, and we'll see one of our vipers in just a second that's lost its tail, but has regrown it. Let's talk about breeding viper geckos. And I think my foot's falling asleep. I really do need a different setup down here in the facility. Breeding viper geckos is super easy. Once you can establish a male and a female, you can keep them together or you can keep them separate. How do you tell males and females? Well, males have preanal pores that you can distinguish at a fairly early age. As they get a little bit older, you can also see the hemopeno bulge start to develop. For me, what really works well is to introduce the female to the male and let them stay together for a couple of weeks. I take the female back out and I start looking for eggs. How do I find eggs? Well, in the sand, I mound up a couple of mounds and keep them a little bit deeper than the rest of the sand. I usually start digging in those areas very gently with my fingers, raking through the sand until I find the eggs. If I don't find eggs in about 30 days or so, I reintroduce the male and the female. Like I said, it's really that easy. Let's talk about the incubation of those eggs. I take the eggs and it's always too late and I put them into a bottle cap with a little bit of clay compound in that bottle cap. I take the bottle cap and I put it over some medium that's moist and that medium can be perlite, vermiculite, more clay. It can be anything that you want as long as that medium stays wet and the clay inside the bottle cap ho caps holding the eggs stays dry. I love using the bead boxes or lure tackle boxes, the little plastic boxes with all the compartments. I'll take the bottle caps, put them in there with the wet, moist medium, and then I'll mark on top of the bead boxes for each compartment, the animals that laid and the date that they laid. When incubated at about 80 degrees, the baby viper geckos will hatch out in about 60 days. Okay, here's the really tricky part, baby care. And as I'm saying this, I'm distracted by a leopard gecko scratching its uh, enclosure. Baby care is the trickiest part of this whole process because they really need small foods. Well, what kind of small foods do they need? Well, look at the size of these babies. They're so tiny. Compare a baby viper gecko to a Periodora picta, which everybody says is so small. What is that, about a third of their size? So with a baby gecko this small, you need to feed it small foods. So within about 24 hours of them hatching out, and I usually leave the babies in their hatching box for about a day or so, and then I'll take them out because they go through that first shed, and I want them to stay in a container that's more humid. I love using the six and three quarter inch deli cups, fill it up about a half of an inch of sand, put a little tiny water bottle a uh, cap in there for water and put another little tiny water bottle cap in for food. Put a little bit of uh, supplements in that cap. And you can also take a bigger bottle cap, put a little niche in it and use that for the viper gecko babies hides. So what kind of foods can you find for these baby viper geckos? Well, I always start off with micro mealworms and I pick out the very smallest that I can find. I actually breed mealworms just for this purpose so that I can put a potato down on top of the substrate for a, a mealworm enclosure and then pull the potato out and then scrape off the teeniest, tiniest of mealworms. Another great food for these baby viper geckos is dwarf white isopods. What a perfect size food item for these babies. In the past, we've also fed springtails as well. 
And finally, you can feed fruit flies, but make sure that you feed the smallest of the fruit, fruit flies. Here's a huge tip to get your baby vipers up to size as quick as possible. Make sure you feed your baby vipers every single day. I can't tell you how important this tip is. If you're feeding every single day, you're going to find that your baby vipers will grow to be sexually mature, actually under 12 months of age. You know, thinking about it, maybe I should have watched the video just to make sure that I was mentioning the same information in both of them so I wasn't contradicting myself. I hope I didn't. Let me know in a comment below if I missed something. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you next video.